Melissa Manigo, how are you? I'm good. Hi, how are you? Not bad. And I'm it's I'm gonna be honest with you, make a confession. So for years I said your name incorrectly, your yes. last name. To mm -hmm. where I think it was just I can't remember when it was, but you made like a post about how to pronounce it and everything specifically. And I was like, Oh, I've been saying this wrong for a long time. You know what's really funny? I I feel like I correct most people and then they still say it wrong and I'm like so I kind of just stopped correcting people because I was like people just say it wrong either way. <laughs> wonder how much of it is like how many times you say it before you get corrected that it just like becomes you said it incorrectly for so long that it becomes ingrained. Yeah yeah um, but that's a that's a uh, word of advice for people with tough last names to pronounce. Do a Facebook post or an Instagram post about it, TikTok, Snapchat, wherever you have your followers, people will start correcting themselves. Or maybe do a phonetical thing like in, underneath your Twitter or something. It actually, is, uh, my Facebook has that. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't have Facebook anymore. Mm, smart, smart. Yeah, I'm not a. I mean, I hate social media to begin with. It's just not something I. I think if I wasn't a musician and a music teacher, I would have gotten rid of it. But it is a really useful tool as a musician. So, yeah, I mean, so personally, I don't have it, but then I am, I'm still on it almost every business day for, you know, label purposes. So I, there's some of the, I can't really escape it, but personally, I don't have yeah. it anymore. <sighs> nice. I think like her, like, I guess you could always have like a fan account or whatever. But for me, like, since I'm a music teacher, I have so many students that like reach out to me or prospective students that will reach out to me through my personal account or whatever. It's definitely good for business. So I keep it. Yeah, it's tough to balance the personal posts versus the business posts, especially if you only have one page. Yeah, I mean, I do. I rarely post once in a while. Now, I mean, I've been posting a lot lately because my band just released a song, but um, once in a while, it'll be a personal post, but nothing, I really don't post that much <laughs> on an average, normal, on a normal, like during normal times, I don't really post that much. Once in a blue moon, I'll post like a nephew picture or like a cute nephew or like, I don't know, a picture with my sister. That was about it. <laughs> Would you feel like you're having to connect more with people digitally because obviously you can't do shows or anything? Oh yeah. I mean that, I guess that's the other saving grace of it is like, I am not really, a, I'm not a huge fan of social media, but, um, well, personally I'm not, but it is, it is a saving grace and it is on a personal level too. Like, gosh, just last night I was on, oh, I don't know, like, I think it was like a, it was hometown heroes in the Delaware Valley. Um, I forget what station it is, but it used to be on, like WSTW, but it was just moved. That's why I don't remember what station it's on now. But um, we were talking and the DJ actually played um, a song of my old music teachers who is in the area. And, you know, it was cool because we got to reach out through, I got to reach out to her like, oh my God, we're on the same radio program. It was good to hear you. You know, so sometimes like on a personal level, it is actually really nice to have that, especially during 2020. So tell me a little bit, I mean, obviously we, know each other more so probably than I do a lot of the other artists, but talk to me a little bit about your getting started in music. Oh, like getting started, started like the beginning. Well, yeah. We, Melissa. Like the, like the, the in the womb kind of shit. <laughs> well, if you go um, back that far. Yeah. I mean, I honestly probably could. My dad um, plays music. So I think he, always made sure it was a part of my life but I really did just gravitate towards it I think we had this little baby keyboard and I would always like, like sit there when I was real little and like plunk out melodies when I was old enough to like plunk them out not knowing what I was hitting but I would do it by ear and then I started getting my I have a good friend who's a couple years older than me and she would she's a brilliant piano player like absolutely incredible and she would just give me her old piano books, like the beginner bastion books, you know, level one, level two. And I remember I was probably, it's probably under 10. I was probably like eight, nine, 10 when I started reading through them. Like when she was done with them, she would give them to me and I would take them and I would read through them. My parents had a piano and I think like a couple books in my parents realized that that wasn't something a normal child does <laughs> sit there and like teach themselves beginner piano book stuff um 
so they took me to a piano teacher. So I started taking piano lessons at, I think I was 11. Um, and shortly after that, I got right into guitar. My dad had guitars everywhere in the house um, growing up. So shortly after that, I picked up the guitar. Um, and then I went to a performing arts high school for voice. Um, I studied classically there and piano. And then I went to Drexel for more music stuff. I didn't realize you went to a performing arts high school. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cab Calloway School of the Arts in Delaware. So how, what, how old does that differ? Um, it's really funny. People are like, wow, so you didn't have to take like math. I'm like, oh no, we have to take all the core courses. We absolutely took math, science, everything. But a lot of what we were doing was like rooted in the arts. Like they would find ways to like connect it to the arts. So we did take your basic high school classes. Um, but we were super rooted in the arts and each student had like a major and a minor concentration. So instead of having to take like random electives, although we took some of those too, but like your main focus was voice and then your minor was piano, but there was also like dance and theater and visual and even, um, I think they called it communication for people who were writing writers. Um, so I did voice and minored in classical piano. And so most of most people probably know you from being the lead singer from June Divided. So you meet the the Motley crew such as they are at Drexel. You want to talk a little bit about the the finding those folks? Yes, um, I meet Chris at Drexel, and we just kind of like hit it off. Like we're just he's a great partner and he's just a great friend. So um, and then we just June Divided was just a um, a senior project we actually were more into the film side of the audio stuff like in Drexel we actually scored a ton of senior films we we did a lot of like scoring and like um sound effects and that kind of stuff for a lot of the film kids we were kind of like the go-to um and I June Divided was like a project that we had to do and then we graduated in the recession um it was the 2008 recession, but we graduated in, I'm going to date myself here, but we graduated in 2009. And, uh, you know, there were no jobs, especially for like music people, um, were the few jobs that there were. I remember I had a friend that got like a lease up in New York. He had like, he was the only guy that had the job and he got laid off within like the month that he was hired. It was really tragic. So it was a terrible time to graduate. So we really were kind of floundering around and then we kind of just our bass player who played bass on our project, who's also with Drexel, Dane, um, who still plays with the band on and off. Um, Dane was like, let's like do the band for real because there's like nothing better to do. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. And then we um, posted a Craigslist ad of all things, drunkenly. We drunkenly posted a Craigslist ad <laughs> and, uh, one night and Keith, our drummer, responded. And he lived right down the street. He was around our age. He liked all the music we liked. And he was ridiculously talented. And I, I feel like when we met Keith, he didn't know how talented he was. Like, he, he never really taken formal training, maybe a little bit here and there. But I feel like when we met him, we were like, oh, man, this guy is so great. I don't even think he knows how good he is. So, and that's how we became the the motley crew as we are uh, and then lenny lenny got involved as a manager from like a manager perspective um and then but he also played bass and when dane kind of when dane's life got a little busy with you know he had a wife and kids um lenny kind of stepped in but now lenny's kind of busy and now dane is stepping back in so the two of them we just posted a live feed video where we did an instagram live stream for the new song that just came out and Dane's actually playing with us in the video. So the, the two kind of swap out. So it's kind of like a nice, a nice big old family. Ashley, do you remember how we got, how I got started with Chesky? You were recording June Divided. You had us come up and we did like some kind of studio thing. And then you were like, do you have anything else you want to lay down? And I was like, yeah, I have this song called Airplane. It was on ukulele. I was like, we can just like play it or whatever. And you're like, all right. And that's actually why you, you that's what you brought up. I remember you coming back to me and being like, hey, so I work for Chesky, like, you know, I remember you did that song Airplane, Airplane's on the Little Crimes record. That's what I remember, because I remember that was the first time I did record it, it was somehow through you, and it was right. 
Chesky. Right. Um, so I was doing a recording with you outside of Chesky where we were doing yeah. just a live acoustic thing in the studio. Yeah. And that sort of prompted the thought process of, oh, she's got other acoustic stuff that might not end up being June divided. Mm-hmm. So how do you make the determination as far as when you're writing a song, if it's going to be a June divided song or a you song? Um, I don't know. Honestly, I think so. Little Crimes, like that album I wrote for Chesky specifically, like it was for that. Um, I feel like, I don't know if I would have done just like a bulk project, like a little stripped down, pro- although I loved it and it was really cool. And it was like a cool side to kind of have captured um, through that record. I don't know if I would like, I don't know. Um, I do write other stuff for myself and I write other stuff with other people. Um, June divided stuff. I don't know. Like it depends. We, um, we have some new stuff coming out and one of the song, the one we just released the wall that was written kind of in practice. Like we got together and Keith started like playing on his electronic drum pad. And I was kind of like, oh, wait, I hear it. And then like the song came together and we kind of jammed on it. And then I took it home and I arranged it for the band and kind of like made the demo all sparkly and clear cut. And then that was that. Um, And then another one that we have, I just wrote myself, but I don't know, it just, and I, I kind of like was like, thinking about it in my head, like, do I want to keep it for my own, like, solo pop project? Because it is kind of a more of a poppier sound. But I think there's, like, a lot of energy to it. And I, like, the thought of me performing the song without the band kind of made me sad. So I was like, yeah, there's enough energy in this one for it to be June Divided. But so sometimes it's, like, the energy. Sometimes it's, like, what where I write the song. And sometimes it's just kind of, like, sometimes it's very obvious. I, like, the few songs that I have been working on on my own, Um, it's not, it's not gene divided. It's just the way it comes out differently. I guess I have a lot of influences too. So it's kind of like, if it's a gene divided song, I kind of know, I guess. (laughs) So you're, you've got a solo pop thing brewing too, sounds like. I mean, I do. I've had it for a while. I wanted to release it in 2020, but it's been such a year (laughs) it's been really i mean we you know june divided almost didn't even release anything in 2020 but we kind of didn't want the year to get the best of us um it's a little easier to release when you have a fan base already and people Mm -hmm. that follow you when you're a new artist it's kind of like it's an awkward time to be a new artist so i think i'm just kind of like hanging on and kind of thinking about it i'm still working on it it's kind of like a passion project for me it's just like fun so um you know i sh- probably should get a move on <laughs> with it but um i i'm just kind of enjoying it i mean obviously in 2020 you might maybe not as much but when you're writing the song do you think about the live application as well because if you're doing solo pop stuff i'm just i can't see you doing having backup dancers and um, that kind would- of thing no, it wouldn't. It certainly would not. It's not like a Lady Gaga thing. Although mm-hmm. I, I, I fucking love Lady Gaga. Absolutely, <laughs> love Lady Gaga. absolutely love her. I think, I think, um, Stupid Love was like one of my top listened to songs this of twenty twenty on Spotify. Um, for the record, love Lady Gaga, but it's definitely not that kind of pop. I think it's more like alternative pop, like indie pop, kind of like um, more of like maybe who are some comparisons I've gotten, um. I, more of like a Lord or a Maggie Rogers or like something like that. Mm. Definitely something like a little off center. It's not like, so I don't think there would be backup dancers. <laughs> but yeah, I do think about the live um, application of it. I don't know. Um, it definitely can be like played by a band um, or it can be stripped down. I, f- I always have this theory that a good song can be stripped down, should be stripped down. Um, and it can still hold its weight. So yeah, I think about it. Well, looking back, we're four years beyond Little Crimes, speaking of stripped down. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about that project since it was something that was so different from what you'd done? Oh, it was a cool experience. And it, it got me, um, you know, it, it definitely did a lot for me. And people still write me randomly and say that they love the record. And um, students have come to me because of the record. So it was definitely a great great experience for me it was really fun and um two of my bandmates and june divided actually played on that record with me as well so this is another it was just like really really fun and 
it's actually behind me. I have my little shelf um, <laughs> of my albums behind me. This is actually on my shelf. So when I'm like, when I have a new student, because everything's on Zoom, so I teach on Zoom so much. So my like stuff is behind me. So they know I'm legit. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I remember the CD release show at World Cafe Live too. That was a fun one. Yeah, that was fun. It would have been more fun had the air conditioner not broke on the hottest day of the year, but it's okay. We made it through. It was a great show. So what, how did you like the experience of recording on one microphone and in a church coming from, I assume, everything you do otherwise is multi-track to the most part? It was stressful. I think it was stressful making an album like that. Um, I also didn't have a ton of time. Um, but it was fun and different and definitely something that like I appreciate and like it's a cool thing to say like, oh, I did this and like it was cool to experience. Um, I'm definitely more of a studio nerd than like a live kind of person. Even even with like live shows, like um, I'm definitely more of a get creative in the studio and take however long you want. It's probably why I haven't released my pop project yet. Um, so it's not always a good thing, but it, it, I'm glad it, I'm glad that I had that experience. It was awesome. Um, but yeah, I could stay in a recording studio for months. <laughs> as long as it doesn't become your Chinese democracy, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> Just the other night I had somebody complaining to me that I hadn't really said that my solo stuff yet. I was like, I know, I know I'm going to do it. I think I'm just waiting for 2021. I mean, I kind of toyed with kind of maybe releasing a song by the end of the year, but then June divided decided to release our stuff. And I was like, all right, well, I'll just, I'll just wait. It's kind of hard to promote two things at once. So yeah. it is very difficult to promote stuff right now. I can't go on tour. Yes. Um, I mean, that's part of why we started doing the podcast too. Just try to get the artists in front of people just to remind people that they're out there and exist and are doing things. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, it, yeah, it's really weird. Like everybody's like, oh, you know, we, you know, cause we really, we just released our new song, The Wall on Friday and, you know, we got great response and people are like, oh, I needed this, you know? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like so thrilled, but it is very tough. Cause like where artists make their money back mm -hmm. is through shows, you know what I mean? So it's weird. It's so weird putting music out at a time like this but it is important because people need it i need it when i see a new song is out by one of my favorite artists i'm like oh thank god something good in this horrible year so you know it's important well not only that you can't go do tours but there's depending on where you are in the world there's a lot of record stores that aren't open and aren't carrying product too yeah so it's like okay well if you're gonna put it out physically people are just gonna have to get it on amazon that's gonna depending on where you are might be the only place where you can get it yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how we recover from all this as an industry. That if we recover from all this or what shape it's going to take after this is all over. Um, it's definitely weird. And sad. And we're still recovering from Napster 20 years later. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the music industry has ever actually recovered, <laughs> um, but yeah, exactly. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of shape it takes um, moving forward. Well, my biggest concern is the venues. I can't imagine if you're not Live Nation that you're not going to be closed after all this. Our, like, honestly, our favorite venue shut down in Philly. We were going to have, like, our, when, our, the original plan was to release these new songs in the spring of 2020. Um, and we were in talks with the venue or I think Lenny was already in talks with the venue about trying to um, schedule the show and it shut down for good. So which one is that? Uh, Boot and Saddle. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's like cool. It's like a little, it's like a smaller intimate venue, but like the vibe is really awesome. Like we had our last show there and it was like, it was so much fun. So like that was hard to hear that that one shut down so yes it's and exactly and like going on tour from now on like where are bands like us supposed to play it's like right we're not going to sell out the live nation venues but you know we need these smaller ones but all of these smaller ones are shutting down so like who knows what that means for bands touring in the future it's really it's not good dude <laughs> not good 
Have you considered doing any live streaming shows? Um, we did. Friday, we did a, like a premiere and a live stream with um, Alt 104.5, which is like the big alternative like station um, in Philly. But we did it on their like Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. I did another streaming show with Gable Music Ventures. We did two of those. Um, they're cool. The one, first one I did, I just did like a solo one through them and like I put my Venmo up and said that my tips were going to go towards um, hospitals in the area for PPE because this was like in April, like around the height of it. And I was actually surprised like how many people donated and I was able to actually give a good bit to some hospitals in the area, which is really cool. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess, are you able to get to get access to people who might not get to see you in a show otherwise, different parts of the world? I don't know, maybe. Like, we should probably do more. I was thinking about maybe just doing like an ac another acoustic live stream on my own. Uh, technology is not on my side, I'll tell you that much. So I think that's why I'm a little hesitant to do it. <laughs> I need to like get a new phone, I need to get a new laptop. Technology is not on my side and I always have like the worst luck so I get very like nervous with the live streams. <laughs> um, but maybe if I can get somebody to like do it for me <laughs> so I don't have to worry about the tech part. Um, yeah, we, I should probably do more things. <laughs> so what else are you doing to sort of keep you occupied, make up the time? I, I mean, well, I'm working. Some people, you know, are out of work during this pandemic and my heart goes out to them. It's horrible. I actually am working more than I ever have. Um, Zoom music lessons are a big thing. I teach kids, but I also teach adults. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm working a lot. I also do voiceover work as well. And that hasn't i've always done that work from home so that really has just kind of remained the same um so that's what i'm doing <laughs> just work <laughs> work and um planning my wedding that's about it <laughs> that can't be fun right now um actually <laughs> it kind of is it's like a nice distraction and i've always wanted like something small anyway so it's kind of working out <laughs> in my favor but how far off do you have to put it to feel comfortable well, there is a vaccine on its way and um, my fiance works in the healthcare industry. So he should be some of the first people to get it. Um, so it, yeah, I mean, I've been very strict about the whole thing. Um, you know, my sister just had a baby and then I also like take care of my grandfather. So who's 92. So for me, I've had to be like really, really strict about it. Um, we're planning it and if it has to move, it has to move. And, but it is gonna be just very small, which is the way I've always wanted it. So it hasn't really changed much. You can be in Philly? No, far away. What? Don't even worry about it. <laughs> far, far, far away. Um, no, not that far, no one has to fly, but it's definitely kind of a destination, but not too far, like you can drive there. But we just kind of wanted to get away, especially after. <laughs> Especially after this year, and hopefully by then, you know the vaccine will have made a dent in, you know, this. But I don't know. We'll see. So, what's the new song about? The new song, the wall, the like the new one we just released. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, um, what is the new song about? We got together this, and we have written it in like 2019, and we had gotten together. And we were kind of mad at each other. Like we all met, met at the rehearsal space and there's something about a tour. Like one of us wanted to go on this tour that made no sense. And the other, the rest of us were all like, no, we can't do that. Like it wouldn't make any sense. It's going to hurt us more than it's going to help us. And it was definitely like the tensions were hot. And then we got together and I don't know what happened. Like I think we got together once and kind of duped it out a little bit. And then the second time we got together and he kind of started playing that drum beat that you hear in the beginning of the song. And then I was like, I don't know, I just, it kind of just came to me. And, you know, at the time I was kind of writing it about like, you know, the obstacles we were facing at the moment. Um, but then 2020 hit and it's clearly, it could be about all kinds of things. <laughs> Suddenly it's about, you know, getting through that obstacle or that wall that's in front of you. You guys have been together 10 years now. 
So there's bound to be some some headbutting here and there. Headbutting and obstacles the whole way. <laughs> but we're still really good friends, so obviously nothing, not no headbutting that bad. Obstacles that bad, yes, but uh, overall um, we're still really really good friends. So that's cool. So what do you see on your immediate horizon? You have more June Divided, more solo stuff. What's coming next? There will be more June Divided, that I can say. Um, solo stuff, I, eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> if it's not my Chinese democracy, then eventually, yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we did have a 10-year... <laughs> our very first EP was going to see its 10-year anniversary February 2021, so we we're planning like this really good show and it'd be awesome. And obviously, we can't do that now. So we'll probably, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do a 10.5 anniversary show or an 11 year anniversary show and get cheeky with it. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll probably do something for the 10 year. Obviously, not a not a show, but we might have something up our sleeves for that. All right. Well, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, URL, Facebook, social media, where can people find you, find the new tune? Yeah, um, my own social media. I mean, like I, I said in the beginning, I'm not that active on it unless it's about music, but it's just my name, Melissa Manego. <laughs> <laughs> At Melissa Manego. I'm also the only Melissa Manego like, in the world. So if you Google me, you can find me pretty quick because um, it's a weird name. <laughs> Same with June Divided. It's also a weird band name. So we're the only June Divided in the world. So if you Google June, the month, divided, like cut in half, June Divided, you can find us. Um, we're just at June Divided on Instagram and Twitter and backslash June Divided on Facebook and everywhere else. So that's um, JuneDivided.com. All right. Thank you for coming on. Well, thanks so much for having me. I lost again to the war in my head. Now apathy's my only friend. I'm never right The heart, it doesn't lie And it knows of all my little crimes Yeah, now I understand why Why I won't sleep tonight And oh, all my little crimes they stay by my side, they stay by my side Oh, my little crimes They stay by my side, they stay by my side I'm giving up Keeping count of all my faults one by one, they're hanging on oh, oh, dragging me down until I fall With all that I've done wrong And oh, my little crimes They stay by my side They stay by my side Oh, my little crimes They stay by my side 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 The heart, it doesn't lie And it knows of all my little crimes They hide with me tonight Never know what happens to the things we can't let go.
go Oh, all my little crimes They stay by my side They stay by my side Oh, all my little crimes They stay by my side 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 They stay by my side